Welcome to Y Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada, where we have a laser cutter that's really big but not quite big enough to cut James Bond in half. Don't ask how we know this, but if we do need to do it, we have friends. This is lesson six, licensing and cross-border usage. Again, this is an easy section, so go for 95% on the quizzes, so you'll have an easier time on the tougher sections. So, you've studied through this, you're ready to take your test. What do you do? Well, the first option is you can go to an Industry Canada office. Just search for it on a government website or on Google. Uh, you have to pay a $20 one-time fee, and that's it. They'll generate a test for you. If you fail, you can keep paying 20 bucks until you annoy them and uh, they throw you out. Once you do that, your license is good for life. The other option is negotiate a fee with a certified examiner. Now, certified examiners are just regular ham operators. Ham licensees, of course, they have to have their advanced license. Um, and their fee could be more, could be less than the Industry Canada fee. A lot of them will do it for free. The uh, best place to get one of these examiners is contact your local club. Generally, the examiners just want to recover their expenses. So, you know, if they have to drive 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers to see you, uh, they might ask for a few bucks. Uh, so don't expect it for free. Hey, if they come out, buy them lunch or something. Uh, and they're usually pretty good about it, uh, and the clubs will often do a test day where they'll have an examiner there, and you can come in and do it at no charge. So it doesn't matter if you go to Industry Canada office or you, uh, you negotiate something with an examiner. The license is the same. It's good for life. Now, if you want to take the test... Languages and accommodations, uh, you need to take that into consideration. This is Canada, where we have two official languages, English and French, and you must take it in one of these languages. You are not allowed a translator or an interpreter, because you must be able to communicate in one of these languages over the air. Now, if you have a problem reading or writing English or French, the test can be done orally by the examiner, but must be done in English or French. Some accommodations can be made for disabilities. The examiner has some discretion. He may request a doctor's certificate to confirm your disability. And please, when you're contacting an examiner, disclose this. Let them know. Okay? Uh, one example is you can even mouth the Morse keys instead of keying if your disability makes it difficult to key uh, because Morse can get you uh, uh, an upgraded rating, move you from basic to basic plus honors. But in general, the rule is you have to be able to do the test yourself by either reading it or somebody reading it to you. Now, international communications. Let's talk about first, you're operating from Canada and talking to people internationally. So from Canada, the Canadian rules apply first. And those rules are, you can send messages of a technical nature. You can send simple messages of a personal nature. Then secondly, if you're talking to other countries, in general, ITU rules apply. And uh, remember, we talked about this at the start. Europe is ITU Region 1 because a lot of the international standards come out of Europe, so they get to pick first. The Americas, including Canada, is ITU Region 2. And by Americas, we're talking about Canada all the way down to the southern tip of Chile. And then Africa, Asia, Oceania is ITU Region 3. Okay. Now, beyond simple measures of a technical or personal nature, the type of conversation you're allowed to have, the other country rules also apply. And you're responsible for checking to see if you're violating those rules. So, can you relay a message to someone in another country? Uh, 
relaying a message as a service go just that goes beyond just simple messages of a technical or personal nature. So if you want to relay messages, you're going to need to find out what the rules of the country are where you want to relay that message. Now, simple personal technical messages, why is that allowed? Well, think about it, or why is it all that's allowed? You're initiating a conversation. You don't know where the message is going. You don't know who will be replying. And it's going over the air. Anyone in the world with the right equipment can listen. So anything beyond that, you're getting into rules and you got to check. Okay. Now, if you're operating from the U.S., U.S. rules apply. And again, after that, ITU rules. Okay. In the U.S., their rules apply to offshore territorial waters. And U.S. and many countries have a, an exclusion zone that goes to 200 miles. You're in a boat 199 miles off the coast of the U.S., U.S. rules apply. So if you're going to operate in another country, check the band plans, the regulations. Uh, the RAC website has a lot of good information on that. Now, ITU rules don't get into the same nitty-gritty level of detail that our domestic Canadian rules do. Okay? So they're more focused on things like interference and reconciliation of the rules between countries. So radio signals, power, things like that. Okay? The ITU rules don't get into the minutia or the small details of uh, things within the band plans, like uh, where can you use Morse code or what frequencies are allowed by license level, things like that. They leave that to the individual countries. So really, the ITU rules are not necessarily that useful. They're more for stuff at the, uh, the signal level, the power levels and things like that. Okay. Now, if you're a U.S. ham operator in Canada, you're going to follow the Canadian rules first and then ITU rules. So your call sign, you start with a call sign of the prefix for your Canadian region. So VE, VA if you're in Ontario. And the rest is the U.S. operator's call sign. So a U.S. operator operating here with call sign W123456 has to say, this is VEW123456. Okay, it's not a lot of material for this quiz. It's pretty simple stuff, so this is an easy one. Again, the links are in the comments section below, and this is an easy one. So work it until you get that 95% accuracy so you can score lower on the tougher sections. And again, we're YLab, https colon y slash slash ylab.ca. Drop a comment below. Maybe we'll uh, get around to reviewing it and uh, get on to the next test section.